Okay, the final part in our intracranial regulation is going to be spinal cord injury. Okay, so first step, spinal cord injury, what is it? Okay, so what kinds of damage can you actually have with spinal cord injury? Right, you have that, again, you see that primary versus secondary. So primary is going to be the result of that initial trauma. Okay, um, this is usually any damage that's done is going to be permanent in the primary. Okay, for secondary, it's a result of the ischemia, could be a result of hypoxia, hemorrhage, um, and this could be reversible within four to six hours, again, depending on how bad the um, actual injury is. Okay. You can also have complete versus incomplete lesions. So those complete lesions, the patient does not regain function at all. Okay. So this you know, could be those people that end up paralyzed from the neck down or paralyzed from the waist down. They are complete. Okay. Those incomplete, they might regain some kind of voluntary sensory motor function uh, later. So that is a possibility. Again, all depending on what kind of injury they have. Okay. So spinal cord injuries can be the result of concussions, contusions. Um, they can be a result of a laceration, compression on the spinal cord. Um, it can even be a transection, which is like the whole severing of the cord. This is usually going to mean that the patient is paralyzed under the injury. So taking you way back to regular assessment, remember that paraplegia versus quadriplegia or now they call it tetraplegia. Um, paraplegia is going to be those lower extremity paralysis versus your tetraplegia, which is all of the extremities, um, usually from the neck down. Okay, so what are we going to assess with this? We definitely want to look at respirations and breathing pattern, meaning we're going to listen to lung sounds, coughing, okay, looking at mo um, monitoring for changes in motor or sensory function. Okay, so, you know, are they getting worse? Are they maybe getting better? Are they trying to regain some of that function? Um, we're going to assess for spinal shock, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. And definitely looking for bladder retention, distension, any gastric dilation or ileus. Because remember, if you're not, um, if you're paralyzed from the waist down, they might not feel those needs to go. Um, and it's possible that everything is kind of stopped. Not even the voluntary part, but your involuntary function as well. Okay. And definitely going to look for temperature. So this is, could have that potential CNS um, fever, like we talked about in the last two lectures. Okay. So what are some complications? Right. So spinal shock is when we have a sudden depression of the reflex activity below the spinal injury. Okay. And what it looks like is it's usually mus um, muscular flaccidity. Okay. So they're going to be all flaccid muscle and a lack of sensation reflexes. Okay, so this is a sudden a change. So they might have spinal cord injury, they might have been fine, and now they go into spinal shock, and now they automatically don't have um, rigidity in their muscles, and they lose all reflexes. Okay, and this is below that lesion. In neurogenic shock, this is usually caused by the loss of function of this, um, the PNS, or sorry, the autonomic nervous system, the ANS. Okay, so neurogenic shock, is loss of function from the ANS. So this is the priority nursing concern for this is going to be DVT and PE. Okay, because if we lose all the loss of function in our autonomic nervous system, now we have paralyzed portions of the body that don't um, that don't get vasodilated, and then um, excuse me, venous pooling might occur. Okay, so we're going to look for decreased blood pressure, decreased heart rate. You're going to see some decreased cardiac output. And this is all because of peripheral vasodilation. So now everything is staying there, nothing's moving in neurogenic shock, and then we get those PE, uh, PEs and DVTs. All right. The worst complication for SCI is actually autonomic dysreflexia. This is an emergency. Right. It's going to usually occur with lesions over the level of T6, and it occurs typically after the spinal shock has resolved. Right? It could be sometimes years after the actual um, injury itself. Okay? It occurs when the autonomic system is exaggerated, and you might see a severe headache, sudden spike in blood pressure. These people are going to be really diaphoretic, nauseous. They actually might have some nasal congestion, which seems kind of funky, but um, it is one of the symptoms for it. And you might see them with bradycardia. Okay. So this sudden increase in blood pressure can also lead to a sudden increase in ICP, so just keep that in mind.
And even though SCI is usually not associated with increased intracranial pressure, the actual act of that hypertension um, could cause it. And some triggers for this autonomic dysreflexia are going to be distended bladder, which is actually the most common, or either distension or contraction of visceral organs, so think like constipation, and also skin stimuli. Okay, so something as small as a wrinkle in the bed sheet can actually cause this. Right? So remember, it's just an exaggeration to that nervous system. So if my bladder is super, super distended, it's putting a lot of pressure on the nerves, that could lead to it. Okay? Constipation, not being able to go, that could lead to it. So usually the treatment for that would be removing the stimulus, and hopefully it would um, resolve. So outside of removing the stimulus, you're also going to want to lower that BP pretty quickly. Okay. Um, you're going to put them in a seated position. Okay. So we're going to do that posture lowering of the uh, blood pressure and then give them that uh, medication. So usually the best med for these patients is going to be hydralazine. Okay. So that ganglion blocking agent. So that's how we're going to lower that extreme high blood pressure. And then you're still going to assess for the increased intracranial pressure at that point. Okay, definitely looking for what caused it and eliminate the cause. So if they have a distended bladder, they might need a catheter, right? You have to look for the rectum, see if there's a fecal mass. We're going to look at their skin, make sure that no one left, I don't know, a needle cap or something under there. And any other stimuli that could possibly lead to this. And then once you're done treating it and the patient's stable, you're now going to label the chart that the patient's at risk for this autonomic dysreflexia. And the reasoning is, is because once they've had it one time, they will usually get it again. Okay, so how do we treat a spinal cord injury? Right, there are diagnostic interventions. Obviously, your patient's going to need some testing to find out where the lesion is and how bad it is. Okay, so you might have x-ray, CT. Um, they're going to do an MRI to rule out any brain injury. Okay, but when they first get it, they're going to look at emergency management. Okay, so especially if they've been in any kind of traumatic crash, um, they're going to be assumed that they have an SCI until it's been ruled out. So the way that they're going to hold it is that you want to control the patient's head. You're going to put the, your hands at the patient's side of the head, okay, so then they're immobilizing the head and neck. Um, the head and neck. It's going to take four members of the team to move that patient, and they're going to be kept on that board until that injury is ruled out. Okay, typically, they'll apply some sort of um, immobilizing device around their neck. Okay? And these are the people that are going to be log rolled. So again, we're trying to keep them exactly straight and no curvature of the spine. So again, how are we going to treat it? It's more or less treating symptoms at this point. Right? Um, pharmacological, we have seen IV corticosteroids, although they're not really used as much anymore because um, now they're just questioning the benefits. Uh, they're not really seeing any. So research is kind of going back and forth for IV corticosteroids. Definitely respiratory. Um, you're definitely going to assess for impending failure. So looking at breathing pattern, cough, you want to assess the need for mechanical ventilation. Um, you're going to look for any fractures or need for surgery in the motor or sensory department. And then your GI and GU, looking for that bladder distension um, and retention. Okay. Temperature, we're probably going to keep them on a cooling blanket. And skin integrity, again, watching out for any type of wrinkle, uh, any breakdown, anything at all that could possibly lead to that autonomic dysreflexia. And then, of course, looking for those potential complications. Um, outside of the really bad ones that we already talked about, we could probably get a DVT or orthohypo orthostatic hypotension. Okay, so remember, DVT, because all that blood is just now pooling and sitting in one spot, and that orthostatic hyper hypotension um, pretty much for the same reason, right? So we're having all that vasodilation, and now once they move, or if they end up moving, all of that blood's going to go rushing down at one time. So what are we going to teach these patients? Okay. Usually these patients will end up in some sort of rehab, depending again on how bad the injury is. Um, we're going to teach them if they need to be catheterized, they're either going to have a home health nurse to do it, most likely they'll learn how to cath themselves. Um, there's lots of people that do have to cath themselves, you know, every four hours if they're paralyzed from the waist down or from, uh, well, from the neck down, someone's going to be doing it for them. But 
hopefully if it is some sort of lesion that they can help repair or get better, they might have occupational health, physical therapy, um, trying to get them back. We're also going to have to worry about self-care. So, you know, if they need any assistance at home with urination, dressing, uh, things like that, it's all going to have to be assessed before they get discharged. And that is SCI. I hope I didn't confuse you too much with the shocks. Sorry, I kind of talked over myself a little bit, but I will see you next time.